Air Force Lieutenant Stephanie Erdman was today's opening witness. She first told us her story in September and came to Washington, she said, to be a voice for those who've been silenced. Erdman barely survived an airbag explosion inside a Honda Civic last year. Since that day, I've endured multiple surgeries and therapies. I have more to go still. My vision will never be the same. I will never be the same. It's one thing to walk into an auto dealership and not trust you're getting the full skinny from the salesperson. But to not be aware of the fact the car you're buying is made by a company that has been hiding the numbers of deaths and injuries linked to possible defects in its vehicles, that's way over the edge of mere salesmanship and needs to be hammered down fast and furious. Let us welcome back to Midpoint, the leading automobile expert in America. You read her tips and opinions every day at her self-named website. And right here on Midpoint, always a pleasure to welcome Lauren Fix into the show as we get ready to go ahead and put the pedal to the metal. Lauren, how are you today? I'm great, Ed. How are you? And happy Thanksgiving. Hey, happy Thanksgiving to you and the family as well. I know you're not cooking, right? That's Yes, I am, actually. Okay. Oh, okay. There you go. I, I figured you were just going to go ahead and have somebody else come in and cook for you. Come on, no, Lauren, no. take a day I, off. I love to cook, believe it or not. There you go. <laughs> well, we unfortunately have to start out here with what's going on at Honda Motors. Grossly yeah. underreporting to federal regulators the numbers of deaths and injury claims. They didn't report over 1,700 written claims or notices of injuries or deaths. Lauren, how is anybody supposed to trust the Honda Motor Company ever again after this? Well, I mean, it's real easy on the surface to say, well, it's all Honda's fault and throw them under the bus. But we also know that NHTSA didn't do their job. They haven't done their job, as far as I'm concerned, in many years. Starting with the GM ignition switches, it's always a deal, you know, between the manufacturer and the government. So it says to me that the NHTSA, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration is NHTSA, that they are not doing what we as taxpayers have paid for them to do. They're supposed to go after manufacturers and say, hey, listen, we've got all this information from insurance companies and from manufacturers and from consumers, and we have a problem. Let's address it. They have dropped the ball, not just on the ignition switch, but on this whole Takata airbag situation. And when Takata got in front of Congress, they said, are you to blame, yes or no? And they said, well, and, they, and the, of course, the legislators said, well, I need a yes or no. The fact is, they need to take ownership of this. This is a part that is purchased by manufacturers and installed in cars. To blame Honda specifically, it depends on the circumstances. It's very easy to be speculative and say, well, Honda did this or that, or Chrysler or Ford or any manufacturer for that matter. We need to have some details. And what's very strange to me is that after they grilled the heck out of Mary Barra on GM, they did not do the same for Takata. They did not ask for copies of emails and communications and also quality control records where you could then go back and define why are they producing these products? Are they cutting corners? Was there a problem with storage? You know, and if so, when did they know about it and why did they not act upon it? These are factors that we need to know. And in, instead of just totally focusing on Honda 100%, we don't know when these accidents of airbags didn't deploy because we don't have the documentation. It's easy for NHTSA to go after it post, but they didn't do their job to begin with. And it sounds to me that they're almost passing the buck onto the manufacturer because it's both of their faults. All right, then. Are we looking at almost a, a, a wink and a nod here then between NHTSA and the manufacturers where they know they should be looking into it, but they want to keep a, a good relationship with Honda and others and just simply let them off the hook? Well, here's the problem that's been going on for a long time. There's a lot of nepotism going on. People that used to work for the National Highway Traffic Administration now work for manufacturers. Those people that they hire are liaisons. They know the ins and outs of the government and what their regulations are and what to report, what not to report, and how to report. So those people, that's their job. On the other end, new people go into NHTSA. They think they know what they're doing, and they just start teaching them the ropes the way they want to teach them the ropes. So really, NHTSA's not doing their job. Manufacturers may have dropped the ball, but I want to see a whole bunch of emails and some quality control records so we can see who's really to blame. Because to make a judgment call just off of this one statement, I, I think is unfair to both the manufacturers and to the government. I think Takata's at fault and they're trying to cover it up. Just like with the ignition switch problem, we focused it down to who was the team at fault. They got fired. The sad part about all of this is that people are getting injured, and that is not right. The auto industry really does care about their consumers and their drivers. There's a lot of money to be made, and it affects the economy in a huge way. And for one person 
to be out there producing faulty or substandard parts is the problem. So then let's take it one more step here because the House Energy and Commerce Committee, they're going to have a hearing on December the 3rd to look into all yes. of the faulty airbags here. And what you've just indicated is indeed what I alluded to. That's almost that wink and a nod, that nepotism, as you will, between NHTSA and the manufacturers. The committee is going to talk to Toyota, BMW, and Honda, all going to be asked to testify. Any doubt in your mind then that this nepotism, whatever you want to call it, goes on not only between NHTSA and Honda, but NHTSA and Toyota, BMW, Chevy, Ford, and all the rest down the road. They don't let anybody off the hook when it comes to basically helping in the cover-up. Well, I don't know if I call it a cover-up necessarily because we don't know all the facts. Or how about I mean, a failure it, to investigate? Let's call it that. That I like better. Okay. That's true. Failure to investigate goes on the fault of NHTSA and the manufacturers lacking to report. So I think it's a combination of both people at fault. And let's face it, it always comes down to what? The almighty dollar, doesn't it? Isn't that what it always comes down to? I don't, I'm not involved. It's not my gig. It belongs to so-and-so's team. Everyone passes the buck. And then, of course, it has to come down to who they're answering to, which are the bosses, and it always comes down to dollars. On the NHTSA side, oh, let's not stir the pot. That company, that that legislator, whoever's in that state, they give us a lot of money. You know, you know, this is all government and politics mixed in with the auto industry, and it's not a good mixture. I got about a minute or so left here. Let's make sure that we touch on this then. Lawmakers may bar registration of vehicles not repaired after recalls. Most people never get their vehicles repaired once they get the recall notice. So is this now the government basically saying you didn't get it fixed? Boom, your car goes, your car sits. You can't register your vehicle. Could you imagine someone who doesn't have a clue, doesn't know? They took the vehicle in, they didn't know, or maybe they don't want to go to a dealer. Maybe they don't live near a dealer. Maybe they're you know, 20, 30 owners down the road, which is entirely possible. Cars are bought and sold at auctions all the time. And you're going to tell that person, you know what? Your vehicle identification number came up. Ed, you can't register your car. And now you've invested in a car that you can't even drive or register or possibly even get insurance. I'd go through you the ceiling. What? The government's got to stop getting their fingers in places that they shouldn't. We as owners of cars are responsible. We have to take our own responsibility, and that is the first problem. Next, they're going to want us to, they'll, they'll pump our gas for us and do everything for us because we're not babies, but they're treating us like babies, and it really irritates me. I think the government should let let us take care of our own vehicles. If you're dumb enough to want to have an airbag deploy on you and you know about it, then you know what? I can't, I can't make you do something that you don't want to do. You have opened up a whole can of worms here on dumb drivers. We could go on and we could do about 97 shows on that, oh, yeah. and we'd still have plenty of time. But unfortunately, oh, we're out of time now, so I'll have to come back and do that again. Remind everybody, laurenfix.com is where you go. Get her tips. Find out more about everything. Winter's coming. She'll tell you how to handle your car there as well and so much more. Lauren, cook a marvelous dinner. Great Thanksgiving to you and your family. Thank you. Same to you, your family, and your listeners. All right. Thanks yours. so much. We're done here for the moment. We're back after the break on Midpoint.